Hello, welcome to our newest episode of Morgana Radio, where I, your host, Morgana Ray, get to interview the world's most fascinating thought leaders on money, love, and magic. And today we have magic man, Bob Doyle, who's going to be talking about Let Life Be Your Show. And I'm going to for the like one person out there who hasn't heard of Bob Doyle because you didn't watch The Secret and you haven't drunk the Kool-Aid, let me tell you about Bob. So Bob Doyle is best known as one of the featured experts in the movie The Secret, and he's been teaching law of attraction principles from a scientific standpoint since 2002. His goal is to demystify the often misunderstood principles so that people from any background or belief system can utilize the law of attraction to truly create lives they love without necessarily having to take blind leaps of faith or compromise their belief system. Amen. <laughs> Bob's Wealth Beyond Reason program has long been considered one of the most complete and comprehensive law of attraction curriculums available anywhere and has changed the lives of thousands of students over a decade. Bob believes that we are here to acknowledge and follow our true passions and that by doing so, we will most effortlessly manifest lives we love and walks his talk by sharing with the world his own passions for music composition, the ukulele, animals, and even voiceover work. And he has the most beautiful, wonderful, talented girlfriend who's been my friend for over 10 years. So like, we're talking the whole package of, you know, love, wealth, happiness, creative self-expression, and even worse, he's a really good guy. So welcome, Bob. Thank you, Morgana. How nice of you to, to say those things about me. I don't know where you get that information, but wow, you really nailed it. You did your research. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> all about me and the people I live with. That's, it's amazing. I, I'm, it's just, I'm in awe, but ah. it's great to be here. It's always fun to play with you. So, I have nothing prepared. I don't have any prescriptive questions. So we're just going to talk. What is going on with you these days? Well, one thing I'm doing is coming up with show titles for our conversation 30 seconds before we go on the air. That's one thing that's keeping me busy. Yeah. So the, and the title, the whole thing about let your life, let your life be your show or what did, what did I say? <laughs> let life be your show. We can fix it in post. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, the whole concept around that is really it's about the importance of you as an individual uh, being fully who you are, expressing yourself creatively in all these different ways. But you know, obviously, that's that's a centuries old message. Everyone said, be yourself and all of that. But from a law of attraction point of view, there's a whole other layer that we can talk about on there. I mean, aside from the fact that, you know, if you're not being who you really are, if you're not really expressing what's inside you. Over the course of time, you start to you start to deaden out to it a little bit. You feel like you're dying inside. You don't feel you're not you're not in touch with your sense of passion anymore. And a lot of times you don't even recognize it's because you haven't allowed that part of you to flow. So it's just kind of like if you don't use it, you lose it. But I don't really think you lose it. I think what happens is it gets super buried down and it just hurts in this weird, indescribable way. You know, that you're not. You're not being who you're here to who you're here to be. You're not doing the things that really light you up because you've got beliefs around what's the responsible thing to do, what will people think, and all of that. And so I think that what I'd like to talk about with you today is is why that is really that that approach of playing it safe is so destructive, certainly in terms of getting what you really, really want in your life. Now, this is what comes for me when you share that. I was that kid who had no friends. I was the kid who unified the rest of the world in picking on me, right? So I learned at a very young age that being me was not a good thing, you know? And I got some unintentional messages like that from parents and other things. So yeah, you're saying be yourself. Well, what if people don't like yourself? What's the solution? Well, let's talk about that. So first of all, we're talking, one of the things you're talking about is this childhood thing. So 
Let's talk about that for a second, because that's super important. I mean, I've got a teenage son and I've got and, and three children. They all went through this. And around the time of middle school is when people really like that's when the that's when the mean and mean girls start showing up. Right. And even and even younger than that. Now, the point is, kids. Tease I was precocious. I got that in third grade. Yeah, not at early, right. Um, and I think it's actually probably happening a lot earlier now than it ever was before because kids are on the internet. They they were watching TV. They're learning how to make fun of kids. I mean, that's that's really the issue here. You know, the the kids aren't born with wanting to be mean to each other, to belittle each other, to make fun. They, that's not inside any of us. We learn that behavior, and some of us keep it as adults, right? But it's all about insecurity. So what we know now is enlightened transformational leaders is that whatever they say, it's about them, right? But it doesn't make it feel any better if, A, you don't know that, and B, just being on the receiving end of that kind of taunting, you know, it just doesn't feel good. But there is a space that you can get to where taunting suddenly makes no difference to you anymore. Like, if you're truly confident and you love who you are and you know what you're about, it doesn't matter what people say. What happens is when, when people criticize you or say mean things or whatever, it triggers something that you think might be true about you or you've been given reason to believe or something like that. It, it triggers something in you and it's and you make it validate that as being true. And if you don't, you know, stay on top of that, if you're not aware of it, certainly as a child, it gets in there. It's going to stay with you forever until something comes in there and changes it, you know, until you decide to go to therapy or learn release techniques or whatever, you know, because it's in there and it becomes a part of your belief system. So the first part of your question is, yeah, as a kid, it's it's tricky because that that's all the criticism is coming from a different it's, it's, they're learning it from adults, basically, who've passed it on, and now they're doing it. But now as adults, how do we, because I mean, I certainly had my, I think we've all probably had periods in our life when we've been made fun of for something. You know, it may not be constant taunting like you might have put up with, but, you know, you did something, maybe you played a song for somebody on the piano, and they made a, they criticized it, and now you never want to play again. Or you drew a picture, and somebody said, those don't look like wings, and you don't draw again. That kind of stuff that gets in there. But art, music, that's all a part of you, and you were starting to explore it, but before you could really cultivate it and turn it into something that the world might really actually love and clamor for, you got stopped, right? And said, oh, I'm not good enough because Jimmy, who sits next to me in science, laughed at my wings, right? So this 12-year-old jerk has taken your life away from you, right? And I specifically chose 12, because that's a particularly jerky age for boys. Um, and guys named Jimmy for some reason. <laughs> so yeah, so but really it's about getting that confidence. So how do you how do you deal with that as an adult? Well, that's that's kind of the journey. And I think what's timely about the, our conversation and why we really ultimately decided to talk about this is that for me personally, it's something that I'm going through. I'm making myself put myself out there more for lots of reasons, not the, not the least of which is better results with the law of attraction in general, in my own life. I could just keep talking. Maybe you should stop me. After no. Pretend. I'm very capable of interrupting. This is fascinating. Okay. Well, I mean, so from a law of attraction point of view, you know, here's the main thing. You want what you want. You know, you learn about the law of attraction, you get all excited about, you know, about what your life could be and you start creating the ultimate version of your life, you know, if it's really going to be the ultimate version of your life, it's going to be you being you in all of your uniqueness, all of your craziness, all of your idiosyncrasies, all of those things. But a lot of times, you know, we're, we're scared to do that only because we haven't been doing it. So because we haven't been doing it, that's not who we've been being. We've attracted people in our lives and situations that are in alignment with not being that person. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you've been playing small and basically been denying that part of yourself, it makes sense that you have created an environment where that kind of, where, where another way of being might be met with some sort of resistance. Now, a lot of times you don't know that you just, you just expect it. You fear it. You're worried about, well, geez, if I suddenly start coming out of my shell and start being who I really want to be, what will these people think? Right. And that's, basically what stops most people. It's the fear of judgment or what could happen. We create these cataclysmic series of events. Well, if I do this and they don't like it, then they won't do this. They'll tell people this and my reputation. I mean, it's amazing what kind of avalanche we can create in our minds that our ego does really to try to keep us 
from from doing from playing a bigger game. Well, but, and I I think upgrade inherently involves a death of the old stuff. So yeah, some of those people don't belong in your new picture, and they will self select out. Yes, and that's so key for people to know. But it's also one of the hardest things because relationships are. They're very important parts of our lives. We have a lot of emotional energy tied up in them, even if they're not that great, even if they're not very supportive, even if the people in your life really aren't cheering you on, they are the people in your life. Maybe you've known them for years, maybe they're family, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so those, those bonds are tricky just to move away from. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on in our head about, well, but I've been friends with so-and-so for 30 years. I can't just, can't you? You know, the thing is, is that it's really about if you're going to make any decision in your life based on what other people think or what, you know, then you are not living your life. Mm. So, so, and you really need to understand that this is the, for all intents and purposes, this is the one you get probably the one you're going to remember anyway. Right. So why would you waste this amazing experience, this potential that you have to live this life and, and explore all of these passions you have because Jimmy thinks your wings look stupid. Right? Oh, that damn Jimmy again. Telling you, he needs to be expelled. He's nothing but trouble. <laughs> um, so, so that's that, so that's, it, it becomes the tough decision. But if you can go back to my number one tenet of law of attraction is create a vision that you says what that, that's that you can answer the question, why must I do this? Mm. If you can get to that, then you can kind of, unprioritize what other people think to some degree. Yeah, I, I really believe that your desire has to be bigger than your fear. Otherwise, why bother? Yeah, the fear will the fear will stop you every time because it's familiar and you can point to it and there's like this evidence of it, you know, like, well, this could happen. Clearly this could happen. But 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 that's just such a knee jerk reaction and it takes getting very conscious, you know, to be able to see that for what it is. And it takes the ability to be present. So you're not worried about the future or you're worried about what happened to you in the past that is, that is keeping you now from taking action in the present, which is where everything happens anyway. So the joy, the stuff of life is happening right now. It's not happening you know, 30 minutes from now and it's not happening yesterday, it's happening right now. So you know, now is the opportunity for you to tap into that joy, tap into that expression and play that game. Again, yes, when you start doing that, that's highly likely that there will be critics. You're freaking them out. You know, you're, you're a lot of times you're, you're, it's very confronting to them, right? Because everybody wants to play a bigger game than they are. Uh, so many people have things that they would love to be able to go out there and do, and they're too scared and they've got their reasons. So if you start doing it suddenly and they've never seen that before, they're completely threatened, their ego screams. And they're, they're going to do something to try to stop you or make you feel bad or make you feel stupid or they might ridicule you. Maybe not to hurt your feelings intentionally, but it's their own protection mechanism. So if you can really get, I mean, through your, through your core, that any criticism about you and what you're up to is always 100% of the time about them and what their ideas of good or acceptable or responsible are, then you stand a chance of just going ahead anyway. Because eventually, and this is the key, the more consistent you are about being this, I didn't want to say the word authentic, but this true version of yourself, <laughs> you know, then, then, then you will attract the correct people. See, for me, what's happening for me personally is I'm really committed to attracting my tribe, mm. not just everybody who's interested in the law of attraction which is I'm when I first started teaching it, definitely what I was after because I was just starting a business. I want everybody. And of course, my program's perfect for everyone. And then I learned that, no, that's not true. I don't want to deal with the people who are whiners and arguers and, you know, debaters and all that other stuff who just want to pick fights. So I'm clear. So I got more and more clear about, you know, the types of people I wanted to deal with and all of that. But then, you know, I started to become just Bob Doyle from The Secret, who had all this law of attraction knowledge. And I'd try to infuse personality in every now and then. But over the course of time, and, and for a long time, that was fine because that was what my driving passion was, was I, you know, I learned about, had results with, got a deep understanding of the law of attraction and wanted to go out there and spread the message. Then The Secret happened and, 
you know, so that that really took over my life in terms of the law of attraction seemed to be in my mind, to some extent, the only thing I could do, because I felt like there was this expectation that Bob Doyle, well, he teaches the law of attraction, he was in the secret. So that's what we expect from him. Right? And that's somebody else's show. Yeah. That's, that's not your show. It's part of your show, but it's not your show. And anybody who follows you at all, you know, you can't find, you know, watch two videos on YouTube without seeing a ukulele. Yeah. Um, or my dog. Or your dog. Right. And so let's let's bring this because now we've heard about all the horrible things that will happen when you are yourself. <laughs> right. Let's talk about some of the good things that happen when you make your life your show. Why are you doing that? Yeah. So so I'm doing this. This is there's a double meaning here, obviously, making you're making life your show. I am creating a show on Blab and YouTube and stuff, the Bob Doyle show. And what I mean, and what I'll be doing on that show is being all those aspects of Bob that people probably don't. Well, they, they know, they see it if they follow me on Facebook and that type of thing. But otherwise, if they're expecting law of attraction, Bob, they will be sorely disappointed. And it doesn't mean I won't ever mention it because, you know, it's part of who I am and it'll come up. But the point is, I won't, I, that's a place for me to showcase all these different aspects of me. But I don't have to just limit it to a show on Blab. You know, I can do those things in my life. That's why I'm saying let life be my show. In other words, instead of just, you know, quartering off 30 minutes uh, uh, every few days to be myself, I, I, it's totally okay for me to go out in the world and play the ukulele and do great things for animals or be silly or whatever. You know, I don't have to relegate it just to that. So it's okay to be who I am, knowing that some people might suddenly go, what is Bob Doyle doing right now? And they're either going to like it or they're not. They're going to be on board and follow, or they're going to say, you know what? I think I need another guru, which is just fine. But, you know, so, I mean, that's what I want is people who, in terms of the law of attraction and my work in personal development, people who get, yeah, the law of attraction, the way I explain it, and that they benefit from all of the work I've done in that area and the science, all of that. But also they appreciate that I'm playing an, an, a different level game. And hopefully that will inspire them to do the same thing. You know, you were talking to Alex Mendoza and that was just yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Uh -huh. It just seems like forever ago about this whole concept of doing a show, like literally like what you're doing and what I'm talking about doing, getting out there and putting yourself out there as a way to, well, lots of different things, business building and all of that. But from a personal development point of view, I think it's awesome that we all, that we have these uh, platforms like Blab and Periscope and YouTube and Hangouts, whatever, that we can start putting ourselves out there and just testing the waters and slowly but surely, getting those people to find us and say, Hey, I like what you're doing. You know, now, of course you can put on your marketing hat and get be, be way more um, intentional about getting people to come and find you, but just putting yourself out there puts out this different vibration. You literally change what you're putting out in the universe. Every time you slip into being a different way, like, cause when you start to really pour out your creativity without apology and boldly, your whole everything about you is going to change. And so what then becomes a, what possible for you to attract in your life, new things show up that could never be there. If you're denying your own value and your own worth and your own, you know, what you have to contribute. And that's what we're doing when we come up with reasons why we shouldn't express ourselves. Somewhere. This makes me think of dating because this is a business show. We're going to talk about dating. Perfect. And if, <laughs> if you go on a date and you have your false face on and you are being who you think the other person wants you to be, that person will not be dating you. They'll be dating who you're pretending to be and that relationship will never work. That's, and that's also true in business. That's, that's the, the perfect analogy. And, and because that, and that's kind of what I ran into. Mm. I, I was generic Bob Doyle from the secret. I, all my videos were, hi, I'm Bob Doyle. One of the feature teachers in the film, The Secret, and one of the most frequently que asked questions, you know, that. Mm -hmm. And so I did that to myself, you know, by playing safe. I could have come out of the shoot being Bob Doyle and being kind of crazy and a little off center from the beginning. And people and I may have occurred as as quirky as I am. But where would I be today 
with my tribe and my level of enjoyment of what I do day to day, if I had always done that from the beginning, if I just right out of the gate said, yep, I know a lot about the law of attraction, I can help you. And here's my puppy playing a banjo, whatever, you know, something like that so that people understand what they're dealing with. And yeah. there's plenty of eccentric type people out there who are doing that kind of thing. So it's not like that's a, a nail in the coffin. It's actually what makes you unique and what makes you stand out. What's going to make me different than all the other secret teachers is this crazy crap I'm doing so that I'm not, you know, don't just seem like another one of those, nothing wrong with them, but I'm clear that that's not who I am. Right. Well, and you're bringing up, I think something really, really important is the willingness to repel, Yeah. to repel the people who are not, you want, you want to scare off the people who are not your people right. so that you can be visible to the people who really belong with you. Yeah. And and so if you're a beginning entrepreneur, you that may not click right for you because you're like, I need business. I need money. I'll take anybody. That kind of mindset. And you're just setting yourself up for eventual difficulty because you're really, you, you can't be all things to all people. And it's not going to be fun to try. It's going to be exhausting to try to make everybody happy. Uh, no. So again, if I if I could do it again, I would have done things differently. Um, but now it's 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 not too late. You know, I can start right now. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just deciding, and I'm inviting people to do the same. And you know, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, yeah. with, with the Bob Doyle show, and I'm. But, but I can tell you what's not going to happen. I'm not going to quit when no one shows up. I'm not going to quit if I have a technical goof. I'm not going to quit if I get uh, nasty comments because I'm committed to this so much. Like it's what's far more important to me is that I get to be Bob Doyle as much as possible because I've really felt the effects of not doing that, right? Mm -hmm. It's made me, um, you know, just generally more uh, like introverted or just unsure about, you know, that kind of thing. But when I turn on the camera here, when I do the show and I do that, all that goes away and I feel totally safe to just go. Burp. Now, some days I feel safer than others. Sometimes I'm a little pulled back sometimes. And there are still things that I, in my vision, I would like to do on the show, which I'm not quite ready to do yet, but eventually I will. I mean, that's the whole thing is this is a journey for me, a journey to go through all the discomfort of uh, being nervous about playing the ukulele or, or whatever it is I'm going to do on here, trying new technological tricks that could go wrong, terribly wrong. But, you know, I'm willing to do all of that and make all of those mistakes for the end result that I'm absolutely 100% committed to. So, and by the way, I hope you brought your ukulele well, with I, you because I think that was a condition of your appearance on the show. Uh, but I have a question. So what is your advice? And your girlfriend is saying play the uke. So now you know there's something at stake. Oh, um, what are you doing here? So, Aren't you busy? Okay. What is, what is your advice? to the people listening or watching on how to let their life be their show. What does that mean and why should they do it? That's a lot of questions. Well, why we can work backwards easily. Why they should do it is because they're going to just get much more joy out of life, you know, because they are letting the energy of their passions flow through them. They're going to feel it on a cellular level. And once they get past that initial discomfort, which will happen because that's just what growth is, you know, you're going to you're going to get to the point where you're going to go. I can't believe I didn't always do this. It's going to feel you won't even be able to remember how uncomfortable it was because it'll it'll slip into that. And so you really just I mean, the only thing you can do is start in some way. you got to take and it's going to be those first few steps that are the scariest for sure. It's like any major change. When I left my job, corporate job, when I left my marriage, all of these things were hugely frightening you know, because I thought there was just catastrophe on the other end in my head. But I also knew that if I didn't make these moves that were critical to my life, that I wasn't going to be living my life. And I was going to be coasting through the rest of my life being some version of me and struggling and suffering because I'm not being me. So it, it gets to be, it's that you reach that pain point, Morgana. I mean, you just get to, that's why I, 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 when I'm working with people on their, on their visions and I say, why must I do this? It's about really kind of understanding the consequences of not doing it. Mm. Like if I don't do this, you know, 
what? If I don't do this, what? What does my future look like? Am I always just going to be playing it safe? Uh, because it's not going to last. I can't sustain being just Bob Doyle from The Secret, that generic way. It won't sustain. The business won't sustain. My energy level won't sustain. My effectiveness won't sustain. It's just not, you know, I have to bring more of me to the table if I want to make the impact that I want to make. And so it's not just about me. And what I want to do, it's about my overall effectiveness in life and, and for the people for whom my message and my way of my message is appropriate. Right. So I don't know. I can't wait to meet those people. Yeah. Well, a lot of them are on, on the show right now. So yeah. um, and we are going to take if you're open to it, we can take some questions because I know people are trying, but I want to I don't want to interrupt you. The other thing is, so what does it mean to let life be your show? Does that just mean everybody should have their Periscope show or their YouTube show? Or what does it mean to no, let I, life I, be your show? Yeah, I just mean that, like, it's possible that you, you know how there's people in your life that when they walk into the room, just who they are, you know, like it's on, you know, it's like they're a walking show because of just how out there they are. And it's not, I don't mean those people who try to put on a show who are just obnoxious that way. Hey, look at me, you know, that always on have to be compensating for something. I'm talking about the people who just naturally shine who they are. Even if they're a little quote unquote weird or, you know, different from other people, they just, people just smile when they're in the room because there's something really wonderful about being around someone who is unapologetically self-expressed, even if you're not really into their, like you would never do what they do, but you can appreciate that. And that was, I mean, that was such a driver for me through all of my, you know, twenties, especially when I was trying to figure out who I am and what I want to do, you know, watching people who clearly loved what they did and didn't care what anybody thought. I mean, and just like, like there were, I'd be watching these people and going, oh, I can't even believe, like I would never do that. And yet hurting, inside for that kind of life, for that kind of fearlessness, right? There's just such power and magnetism in a person who is living like that. Things will just come to you. Opportunities will come to you. People will come to you. It's by just you being, and you can't even predict it. Like I have no idea what's going to happen, you know, as a result of me doing this, however long it takes for it to be, be done. But I do know that I'm putting myself in a different pool. You know. Well, there's something that I just love so much about your commitment as a fellow weird person um, is that you give permission, your willingness to be out there, be yourself, be freaky, be funny, be to fail, all that kind of stuff. You, your authenticity there, I used it, the word, gives the people around you permission to be themselves too. And that is what the world is starving for. That's actually a great point because it is like if somebody breaks the ice in a situation where you're a little uncomfortable, it's a lot easier for you to then do that. So you're right, giving people the space to be that. And I think that's really what I want to do. I mean, I, I want people to even other people who are in this industry who might be playing a small game. I want people to know that it's okay and actually way beneficial for all involved to do this. And that's truly, you know, you said it, but you are a great model of this. You know, you are very definitely not the normal sort of whatever, you know, and that's what we, everybody loves about you. You are one of those people whose life is a show, you know, at least for me. Right. So, and I think that that's just kind of how you occur. And there's just something so endearing about that, even though, you know, I wouldn't necessarily do the things you do or say the things you say or whatever. And by you wouldn't marry Devin 16 times, not 16, 14, maybe. <laughs> but yeah. So no, I mean, so, so that, but there is, and you, because of that, you stand out among a sea of other like women in this industry because of that, because of that uniqueness, because of that twist that you have. And so, and, and, and it's, it's really important from a business point of view, if that's what we're talking about to differentiate, to differentiate yourself and make yourself memorable, you know? And so that's, I've got all of that ahead of me. The rebranding that is ahead of Bob Doyle is crazy. I have no, I don't even know how I'm going to do but. Well, I think that it's happened more than you believe. And what I'm really hearing is you're teaching two things through your life experiment here, which is absolutely, you know, you, 
business wise, sameness kills. You become invisible, boring. The world doesn't need more copycats. Oh my God, we don't need more copycats. Yeah. So from a business standpoint, the only way to be seen and heard is to be really loudly, authentic, true, unique, and original. Yeah. And, and that may sound more scary than it is, you know? And, and then the other thing, from a personal standpoint, when you are not being yourself, you are just telling yourself that there's something wrong with you and that will kill you. That's the most devastating law of attraction impact that you can come up with is that, you know, well, if I'm not, this isn't normal or this isn't right or this isn't good enough, then why do you expect if you don't think you're good enough, why would you expect to effortlessly attract all the things you want in your life? And there's so many people who are doing all the law of attraction stuff, right? They got their vision boards, they got the da da da. They've been even working on lots of limiting beliefs about whatever. But if that core belief about I'm not good enough to be just be me isn't there, then you've got resistance to getting what you want built right in because you yourself don't even think you're good enough for the best. So I have a really quick and easy question for you. How do we find out who we are so that we can let our life be our show? How do we find out who we are? How do we find out who we are? Well, okay, so I'm going to have to take the cop out answer unless I really dub on this later because I think for me, it's I've always known it's just being honest enough to accept it. You know, I think we all know that, wow, I, you know, I'd like to do this, but I'm too scared. You know, it, there's, there's those little things. And I would say until you really try it, you won't know for sure if that's you or not. Because I think maybe sometimes we're curious about things and we try it and go, nope, that's not me, right? But you got to go try it to find out. But I think for the most part, I think there's a lot of people who know that they are musicians and they aren't playing. They're, they're painters, they aren't painting. They're actors, they aren't acting. They're entrepreneurs, but they're staying employed, right? They know. They, they know, but they're just, they've got so many other reasons that it's not the right thing to do to go pursue it, um, but they just deny it. You know, they don't really face it, but facing it is clearly and accepting it and owning it and celebrating it. You know, that's, that's the beauty of, of your uniqueness. That is why you will do better than this other person in this area, because you bring you to the table unless you don't. And if you don't, then that's all of that value that is missing. And now you're having to work twice as hard or many, many more times as hard on your areas that aren't really your strengths to try to compensate for what you're not doing that really is your strength. So, you know, it, it's. So do you think you could share that in a song with Ikulele? Messages are just so much easier to remember when there's music that comes along. Okay. I What's the message? Be who you are. I, I really don't. Uh, I don't have anything prepared. Be who you are. You're a shining star. Even if you don't know it. Go outside and do something weird. You are crazy. Go show it. No, show it. <laughs> You're a weirdo. Otherwise, how will we know? No. I hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yay! I've been working on that one for weeks. I think I, got, <laughs> I, think I, got it, I think just about got it down. It's performance, uh, really. No, I really wasn't so, for the uke. I should have. I should have known coming in. I should have thought of something, but uh, no, it's more fun that way. <laughs> I love so, this comment. Usually, he's great at making up stuff on the spot. Um, so I'm kidding. I'm withdraw into my cave and never play again for five minutes. Right. Yeah. I'm going to take at least the next 45 seconds off of ukulele playing. Okay. So where can we get more of the Bob Doyle show? The Bob Doyle show.com oddly enough. Now that is a, it's a site in pro work in progress for sure. In fact, I started scrambling after we talked about it yesterday that we would talk about any of this, I was like, oh, I got to have something there. But but the, but the Bob Doyle Show dot com has basically it's a repository of all the sort of broadcasting stuff I've done like over the past year. Now a lot of it includes Periscope, like Law of Attraction stuff. There's a whole playlist of just Law of Attraction stuff, which I think you know if you're in that conversation, you'll find extremely valuable. And of course, I'm 
I'm mixing in me in there as well. Um, but then there's a couple of things or there's a handful of things that are basically the Bob Doyle show or practices for the Bob Doyle show. You know, that you can go and see kind of where I'm headed. All of it's going to sort of change, you know, and, and, and evolve over time, I'm sure. But right now is the throw it up against the wall and see what sticks phase. And I'm doing that unapologetically. And uh, we'll just see. But but you'll find Instagram pictures there, my periscopes, my blabs, various YouTube things, even my original music that I post on SoundCloud. It all goes to the Bob Doyle show. So you can just go there and spend hours just absorbing all things Bob. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. My favorite was the song. Oh boy. Um, I love knowing you. This is really great. Any final words of wisdom? Well, look, I mean, I, I just, this is one of those things that I just really want to underline that we're not just talking about this because it's a topic. This is super important. I mean, this whole idea of owning who you are and being happy with who you are and being proud of who you are, despite what feedback you may have gotten from the outside, because you were you were created perfectly. Your desires, your passions, your interests, your all of that stuff is there uniquely you. It's, a, it's your gift. And just because other people don't get it does not invalidate it. There are millions of people out there who are going to love your gift exactly how you have it to deliver. You just haven't found them yet because you've been denying it in yourself. You haven't put it out there. You haven't told the universe or anybody else. The universe knows deep inside, but you haven't put it out there that, hey, I am this. So how can anyone appreciate it? Right. And so you're going to if the more you compress yourself like that, the smaller job, the smaller uh, game you're going to be playing automatically. The more you expand and share yourself, the bigger game you're going to play, the more people you're going to invite into life, the richer your experience is going to be. But you just have to start by walking through that initial door of mind boggling fear and just, and again, then realizing, Hey, I survived. I lived on the other side. And then you do the next one. And you do the next one until you forget the fear and you're doing it. Amen. Brother Bob. Hmm. Thank you.